Today is called the ambiguous case, all right? And ambiguous means something that you can't tell. So if I said, for example, you can't put too much candy in little Johnny's mouth, you might be thinking like your kid's named Johnny and, and like uh, you can't put too much candy in there. Well, yeah, if you put in too much candy, he could actually die from so much candy. Or it might mean he loves candy. You can't give him too much candy. Like he just loves candy. Okay, so it's ambiguous. Can't tell what I really meant. This is a triangle that has a third side that could either be this way or it could be that way. I'd like you to draw exactly what I just did. We're going to say this side here is 8. We're going to say this angle here is 45 degrees. And that black side is going to be 7. I think that'll work, but we'll find out soon. And this side is the same exact side, seven. And what would come down right in between the two? Didn't make it perfect. That's supposed to be the hypotenuse if this had been a right triangle. All right, do you get that 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 black side could either swing to the left of the hypot or no half the left of that dotted line or to the right of the dotted line. Okay, don't draw this next one, but I want you to just think it through. Let's say that this side was seven. Let's say that this angle uh, was fifty degrees, and if I made this side right here two units long. Do you get it couldn't possibly connect? It's not long enough. Okay, so that isn't even ambiguous. That's just, it won't work. You can't make a triangle with those sides. A 7 and a 50 degree angle, this is unknown. But that side, it can't be 2. You can just look at it and say, it can't be 2. Not if they're going to have a 50 degree angle there and a side of 7. Now, what I'd first like to investigate is, what's the shortest that the black line here could be? Well, the shortest thing it could be is if it touches right exactly there, making a right triangle. That's the shortest it can. I mean, if it's any shorter than that, it won't make a triangle. So this is the case where you're going to make it into a right triangle. Did I give you enough to be able to use the law of sine? Here's the rules and law of signs. Pay attention. You need an angle and the side across from the angle. Did I give you that? And you need one more piece of info. Because you have to have three pieces of info. Do I have at least three pieces of info? Yeah, I got enough. I can find anything on the, on the triangle anywhere. And because I have an angle and the side across from it, law of signs is perfect. Okay, so everybody go off to the side and write the law of signs. I'm going to go sine of big A over little a equals sine of big B over little b equals sine of big C over little c. My sign got a little messed up there. Okay. Now, can I do this? Yep, I can, for sure. So what do I want to find anyway? Let's find this side here. Now, I've tried to train you that C should be the key angle or side that you care about. C is the key, all right? Unlike in the old days where the hypotenuse was always C. We don't have a hypotenuse most of the time because most of the time we don't have right triangles. This is called non-right triangles. Yesterday and today, it's non-right triangles. 
why are you doing a right triangle in server? Okay, because that's the shortest this side could be. But it could also be a little longer than that, and then a triangle would have to go like this. If it was a little longer than that, it'd have to go like this or like this. All right, so we're not going to figure out the red one. We're going to figure out the black one to just see what's the shortest that side could be. All right, use the law of signs. And now this is the part where today, unlike other days, today we really need you to have a, cal a calculator. So if you need to borrow one, please come up. I'll happily trade you for your cell phone, which you can't use during the hour anyways, or your shoe or your keys or thank you. For right now, just all that matters is today. And today I really need you to have the calculator. So focus on that. Okay, you ready? Everybody start by going to mode. You want to borrow one? No problem. Just give me something. I'm not going to keep it, I promise. Uh, and go to mode and make sure it's in degree mode. Because otherwise, you're just so confused because you're typing in the right thing and it's giving you a wrong answer because you're doing radians. Okay, so be in degrees. Mode degrees. Okay, now that we're in degree mode, I'm going to fill in what I know. And I said to make this side C because it's the thing I care about right this second. So I'm going to call this C. Now this other one could be A or B. This side right here, the 7, that could be A or B. It doesn't matter. I don't care. All right? So I'm personally going to call it A up there, which makes this little A. And then this must be B down here, which makes this little B. I'm going to put it under the 7 so that it's clear. I'm not saying it's like 7B. It's just B is 7. Okay. Now, let's fill in what we know into the law of sines thing. Do we know angle A? It seems like you don't, but you actually do. John, can you tell me how I actually know what angle A is? Triangle is diagonal 180 degrees. Very good. So what is A? 50. Uh, 50 and 50 makes 100, but then we got a 90. It's 190. So try again. 40. 40. There it is. A is 40. Leah, can you tell me what other ones I know? Do I know B and little b or A? And big A, I mean, which one should I use here? I'm trying to figure out what to fill in. Okay, then maybe I should fill those in. What is big B? Uh, 90. 90. And what is little B? 7. All right. Now, I totally get that some of you are like, Mr. Server, we could have done this another way. We could have just done normal trig on this. Yep, we totally could have. But I just want you to see that the... Uh, <coughs> A law of signs would work for this. All right. There's another way to do it. I could have said sine of 50 equals opposite over hypotenuse, and I could have solved for C that way. Sine of 50 equals C over 7. That would have been a lot faster, wouldn't it? The law of signs, I had to write out this complicated formula, stick in three things. I still have to figure out sine of 40 and sine of 90, and do a bunch of complicated dividing to get this A done. It would have worked, though. All right, take a second. And row 1, that's you three, type in sine of 90. Row 2, that's you guys, type in sine of 40 if you haven't already. Be prepared to tell me. All right, row 1, say it if you know it. What's sine of 90? One. Oh, it's 1. Oh, that's handy. And what's sine of 40, row 2? Uh, 0 0.642. 0.642, good enough. Now, I'm going to say it's 0 0.642 over A equals 1 over 7. And then, oh, pain in the butt. I'm going to clear the A by timesing by A on both sides. And then I'm going to multiply both sides by 7. Then I got my A alone. 7 times 0.642. You probably have 0.642 in your calculator. Times it by 7. What would you get? 
4.499. I'm going to say that's about 4.5. Does that seem reasonable? Raise your hand if you had 4.5. Oh, oh. There's only like two hands. Okay, I'm going to try that again. You guys all borrowed so many, I don't have one left. All right. 0.642 times 7. 4.49. Yeah, that seems like it's supposed to be 4.5. Yes. Why are we finding A? I'm finding A. No, it's a good question. I'm finding A to start with. Now, oh, so you guys were saying that that's not the answer for C. Okay. A is 4.5. But we didn't ask for A. But now I could use A squared plus B squared equals C squared. All right. Now, I'd like to just rewind and say, do you get that this is a right triangle and therefore I can use regular trig? Sine of 50 was C over 7. That would have been way easier. 7 times sine of 50 will give me C. Little c is the distance I want. So this would be a lot easier. 7 times sine of 50, 7. Sine 50. Notice I didn't even have to say times, and I got 5.36. Who got 5.36 for your answer? All right. All right. So C, little c, is 5.36. Okay. So this side right here is 5.36. All right. That got really messy. Let's just do another one. Everybody go off to the side, add a page, whatever you need to do. Uh, and we're going to set up another... Ambiguous case type problem. We're going to make this 10. We're going to make this angle 40. And what did I use last time? 7 and 50. Okay, that'll work. 10 and 40. And I want to know if this is a right triangle, how long is that? This time, don't use a law of signs. There's something better. There's a better tool because it's a right triangle. I do think of math as giving you tools. And there's not just one tool you should grab every time. You totally grab different tools. It's one of the biggest challenges of like home improvement is like, oh, if I had this tool, I could totally do this. It'd be easy. And then you don't have that tool. So then you got to like run down to Home Depot, waste an hour, buy the thing, get back home again. And now you're sick of the project and you go watch Netflix. So having all the right tools Obviously, same thing in math. There's a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Nope, can't use that tool. There's trig for right triangles. Right triangle trig. Let's call this c again. It's the one I care about, so I'm going to call it c. Then, Graham, can you tell me the sine equation? Uh, so I got sine equals... Sine of what? All right, I'm calling it C, but you can call it X over 10. And then what? Then you multiply by 10. Correct. Everybody do that and see what your answer is. Okay, to save you a keystroke, you, you can type 10 sine 40 without having to put times between them, and it'll know what you mean. 10 sine 40, 6.4. Raise your hand if you had 6.4. Okay, good. What is this? This length right here must be 6.4. If it's a right triangle... Well, I said it was going to be a right triangle, right? What if that length was actually 8? Do you get it wouldn't be a right triangle anymore then, if it's actually 8? Now, here's the setup you need to see. If it was 8, it would have to swing this way. Then it could be longer, right? And it could be 8. Or it could swing this way. And then it could be also 8. So C could either be 6.4, in which case it makes a right triangle, or it could be 8. And that would allow you to have two different ways. Can you tell which way it's supposed to be? No. Hence the ambiguous case. It's not clear. 
whether the eight inch long side would swing to the right and be over here or whether it would swing to the left and be over there. So that means this distance on the bottom could either be this long or it could be this long. You can't tell, it's ambiguous. This little side is called C, and I can tell you that if that side C is between 6.4 and 10, it'll be the ambiguous case. Where do you think I got the 10 from? That other side over there, right? Because if it's 10, if this was 10, then you couldn't swing it this way anymore. It'd be right on top of itself. There would be no triangle. Okay, so it has to be less than 10. But it can't be smaller than 6.4. In fact, it can't even be 6.4. Otherwise, it would be this side, and it wouldn't be ambiguous. It would be a right triangle, period, if it was 6.4. So if C is between that and that, it'll be ambiguous. So I've made my side be 8. Do you get 8 is between 6.4 and 10? Therefore, I got two triangles. I'm going to draw them in in green. There's this triangle. Or if I go the other way, I'm going to do this triangle in dotted black. If I go this way, then it's this big triangle here. You see how it's either the dotted black triangle or it's the green triangle. That makes sense to you. It's ambiguous. You can't tell which one it is. So that's what you have to set up when we give you an ambiguous case question. You have to figure out what if you swing it this way and what if you swing it that way. Okay, so now we're going to zoom in on just the green triangle. Everybody, please look at just the green triangle. And I'm going to show you why we talk about this ambiguous case so much. Because it'll kind of freak you out. It'll be like, this doesn't make sense. Okay, we're going to do the law of signs. And let's just figure out which sides are going to be called what. Well, we already decided that corner is C. And so then that means this little side on, the, on this triangle is going to be C. Let's call the one at the top A. We actually have a choice. We could call it A or B. It doesn't matter. I'm going to call that A. So then this little side down here is A. Get rid of this pointer. Just trying to emphasize that a moment ago, but I don't want it anymore. Okay, now I've got A, and then last thing I need is B. I'm going to call this B. Do you get that A and B are interchangeable? I could have gone either way. Okay, so then this is B, and I'm putting it above it so we don't think it's like 10 times B. It's just B is 10. All right, I'm trying to shove it over in the slide just so it makes it obvious. I'm only looking at the green triangle right now. Okay, just the green one. Okay, now I'd like you to do law of signs for that and figure out how big angle B is and prepare to be confused. Now with the law of signs, that's easy. But when we plug in everything, it's not going to work. All right, so you have to understand it. So please type it all in as if it's going to work. So what's the thing I want to know? I could figure out angle B. That's what I'd like to know is instead of saying sine of B, let's say angle B is the thing I want to know. Okay. And I also could ask you what angle or side A was. That's an unknown. But let's figure out angle B. All right, so that's our goal. Goal, angle B. So then you go sine of big B. You put that on top. Remember, whatever your variable is that you care about goes on top. Over little b, what is little b? 10. Equals sine of, we better use an angle we know now, 40 over 8. This 40 is so big, I want it to be smaller, fit in this corner better. Okay. 
Would you agree that to get B alone, I'm going to have to times by 10 on both sides? Everybody figure that out with your calculator. You could reduce it, but it doesn't matter. You can use a calculator. So sine of 40 times 10, and then when you get that, hit enter, and then divide it by 8. I just don't want you to by accident type it in wrong. Yes? How did I get the 8? The 8 was given to us. They would give us that in the problem. I knew that it had to be a number between 6.4 and 10. So I picked 8. And you'll be given how long that side is. Or if the problem is, is different, the problem would say what's the smallest it could be and what's the biggest it could be, and then you'd be able to know the answer was in between those two. And you'd have to find this number, which is the hypotenuse kind, or that number, which is just the other side. So if it's any number between there, I gave you 8. Okay, so back to this. Sine 40 times 10 divided by 8, and you get a decimal, and it's sine B equals that decimal. And some of you are going to remember what to do, and some of you aren't. Excellent question. Would, do you agree that we got 6.4? I'm going to round it to 6.43. Does that ring true with what you got? Is that what you got for sine 40 times 10 divided by 8? Double checking myself. Oh, I haven't divided by 8 yet. My bad. Sorry. Divided by 8. I had enough confused with 0.803. Is that sounding right? Okay, good. Sorry, I forgot to divide by 8. 0.803. Now this goes back to, I think you last did this in geometry, which is a couple years ago. So inverse sine, here's what it looks like. Sine with a little negative one. It's right above the sine key on your calculator. Like you gotta hit second to get to it. And inverse sine cancels sine. So B is sine of 0.03, or 0.803. Inverse sine, ugh. Inverse sine. So I'm going to rewrite that nicer. Inverse sine of 0.803. Inverse sine right above sine. 0.803. Enter. By the way, you don't have to do the last parentheses either when you're doing the inverse sine or regular sine. It's always got a parenthesis on the front. You don't have to close the parenthesis at the end and it'll be fine. All right, I got 53.4 is my angle. Raise your hand if you got 53.4. Now, also, do you notice that that is messed up? Wouldn't you agree this angle right here is way the heck bigger than 53? And yet we didn't do anything wrong. How could that happen? Do you have a headphone in? Ah, thank you. How could that happen? Um, does that mean it's like it's less than a Yes. The angle we just found, the 53.4, is actually right here. Do you remember that it could have been going either way? You know, it could have been swinging to the right or it could have been swinging to the left. We thought... It was swinging to the left. Turns out it was swinging to the right. Now, couldn't we force it to go the other way? Yes, we could. Question. So does that mean that if you went through the process of trying to find the angle where the 53.4 is, then you would have found the angle? Nope. You would have got 53.4. Here's the reason. And the reason is that when you do inverse sign, for a reason that you don't understand at all, your answers have to be 90 or less. When you do inverse sine, your answers will always come out as an angle less than 90. So you'll always end up getting this one. But but fear not. This is why we spend so much time on this, and this is why we put it on the test, is because, you know, like, I obviously feel like this is important. This brings up some geometry facts that you should know. Do you get if this side is across from the 8 and this side is across, or the angle is across from the 8, that means this angle must also be 53.4. And that means I can figure out that angle. 
I'm going to take 180 minus it. And what did you say it was? 126.6. Whew, that's complicated. So the moral of the story is, if we give you an angle, a, sorry, a side length, which makes the triangle ambiguous, you will have to find both potential triangles. And when you get an answer like 53 degrees and you're looking at this going, that can't be 53 degrees, hopefully you'll go, oh yeah, that's right. I actually found the other case. And that means this will be the same. Both of them will be 53.4. And then these will add up to 180. So then you'll be able to find that one. Question. You can ask it later if you want to. All right, so I'm going to give you one more like this. Let's see if you got this. I am going to make a 30, 60, 90. Wait, wait, I really should. I think it's better for your brain. We'll make the bottom one be a nice, flat, horizontal line. Okay? Everybody start with a horizontal line. Then we're going to make this have an angle of about 30 degrees. We'll label it as 30. Okay? More than in almost any other unit, how long you draw things really matters. I'm going to pause for a second. All right, so we've got this 30-degree angle. We're going to say that this side is 12. That seems, I mean, we can make it any size we want, right? The one on the bottom, just make inordinately long because it can be whatever. This is unknown. Okay. Then this side here, let's just make it ludicrous. Do you get if I made it two units long, it would never connect? Couldn't possibly connect. All right. Well, then I want to know if this side's going to be C, because it's the one I seem to care about is this side here. I'm kind of focused on that, so I'm going to call it C. I want to know what's the smallest it could be, and then what's the biggest that it could be. See if you've learned that much. Hint, smallest it could be, it, it will touch just like that, and it'll only touch once, and it won't be ambiguous. I'm going to pause for a second while you figure out the smallest that C could be. Okay, we're going to get to this one. I would not use trig for this because it's a... No, wait, wait. I'm sorry. I would not use the law of sines for this. I would use trig for this because we can't use Pythagorean theorem. We don't have two sides. So I'm going to do sine of 30 equals opposite, which we should call C because it's across from big C, over hypotenuse of 12. And then solve it, you times by 12, so 12 times sine of 30. You could have done that one in your head, couldn't you? Because sine of 30 is a half. Did anybody have that in their memory banks, that sine of a 30 is a half? You should memorize that one. This is the second time it's come up so far. I've asked it to you a couple days ago, and I asked you again. <laughs> sine of 30 is a half. It's going to keep being a half till the end of time. And sine of 30 comes up a lot. Okay, so anyway, sine of 30 is a half. And I'm going to times by 12 on both sides. Ooh, I can do it in my head. 12 times half is 6. Raise your hand if you had C equals 6. Cool. Now, couldn't you just have done this by it being a 30, 60, 90, and you could go, that's the longest side. The shortest side should be half that big, and it's 6. Yeah, you could have done it that way too. But that means that the smallest this could be is 6, and if it is 6, it won't be ambiguous. It'll be a right triangle. But what if it's a little bigger than 6? Then it'll swing in two different directions, like this. Everybody draw in those lines in a different color. Yes? Sure, and it made it made six, didn't it? Yeah. Yes, absolutely. I'm just replacing the sine of 30 with a half because I know the calculator would know that. I just know it in my head. You know why? Because of the 30, 60, 90 triangle. 30, 60, 90, 1, 2, square root 3. Sine of 30 is 1 half. But you can use the calculator for it. But if it's ever sine of 30, sine of 60, 
cosine of 30, cosine of 60, or tangent of 30 and tangent of 60, you can do it off this triangle. That's how I got that. Okay. All right. So back to 6 was the smallest it could be, and who is smart enough to know that 12 is the limit of the highest it could be? Yeah, good. Because do you get if I made it any bigger than 12, like let's say I made it 13, I'd have to swing it that way. So it can't be 12, otherwise it'll have to swing to the right. It has to stay between 6 and 12. All right, so let's pick a number between 6 and 12. That'll make it ambiguous. What say you? 9 it is. Now, obviously, you can hear the dust, the, those chairs scraping around. But yet, it's not the end of the hour. It always makes me paranoid because I think, oh, my gosh, class is over with. I happen to know that upstairs they're doing an activity where about halfway through the hour, maybe a little more, they go, must get up and move around somewhere. So It's a little bit like Pavlov's dogs. Did you ever, how many of you know the story of Pavlov's dogs? Okay, it's a, it's a reference enough by old people like me who are going to be your professors in college, you should probably know. This guy named Pavlov, he, Mr. Pavlov had a bunch of dogs and he would ring the bell every time he fed the dogs. He'd ring the bell, he'd feed them, ring the bell, feed them. And then he'd just ring the bell. And what would the dogs do? They would go a little crazy and salivate. Like, so therefore you could tell that they had been conditioned. So could, you, could I get you guys conditioned so that if I do something, if I ring a bell, you guys would all be like, sweet, yes, oh, I sure absolutely could. If I like, every time I rang a bell, I gave you $100 and didn't give you homework that night, you'd get conditioned real fast. And then I'd ring the bell and you'd be like, sweet. All right. So I get conditioned to those chairs moving around upstairs and I'm like, oh crap, it's the end of the hour. I got to, why is it? I didn't think it was the end of the hour, but so anyway. All right. So moving back to this, we have chosen nine. Why am I not even going to try to find this angle right there? Because it's bigger than 90. And when you do inverse sine, you're going to get this one. Whether you like it or not, you're going to get that answer. So I'm going to find that answer. And then I'll use logic to say that's the same as this. And then I'll use logic to say these two together have to add up to 180. And then I'll be able to know both. So would you please figure out I'm going to call this angle B right here. And the angle B could be over here. We can't tell. It's ambiguous. That's the point. So please figure out angle B, which could be the small one or it could be the big one. I hope you have a tool for this. I hope you have the law of signs on your side. So since I want B, I start with that and I go sine of big B. Pro tip, always put your variable on the top. It saves you a whole extra step of complicated equation stuff. Over 12 equals sine of C, which is 30. Oh, sine of 30 came up again. How many times did I say it would come up? Probably like 25. This is the third time sine of 30's come up. I don't have to type it in my calculator because I have memorized it. So sine of 30 over 9. I'm going to times by 12 on both sides. Sine of 30 is a half. Half times 12 is 6. 6 over 9 is 6 ninths, which is 2 thirds, which is 0.3 repeating. So sine of B is 0.6 repeating. Now I'm going to do inverse sine to finish it. Uh, inverse sine of 0.6 repeating. Now I can't really type in 0.6 repeating, but I could type in 2 thirds. But if I typed in 0 .66666 a whole bunch of times, that'd probably be good enough. I got 41.8. Raise your hand if yours would have rounded to 41.8. Okay, awesome. Do you get that that couldn't possibly be the big one here? Because 41 degrees, that makes no sense. It's bigger than 90, so that's this one. 
and then this one must also be 41.8, and then subtract from 180, One thirty-eight point two is correct. Do you get then that impacts how long is this side right here? If it's the small one, because that one's one thirty-eight point two, you could now use law of sines to figure that out. Or it could be the big one that goes all the way across here. Let's act like it's the small one and everybody figure out what side is that called? Well, this was B and this was C, so this must be A up at the top. A is right there, so this is little a. Everybody please find little a. You got a wealth of information. If we have two of the angles in the triangle, then we really have three. Plus we got two sides, we got tons of info. You should be able to use the law of signs. Could you use Pythagorean theorem? No, not a right triangle. Yes? So, maybe this is because of the problems we're doing, but if, if you're looking for an angle and you have everything else and you're just trying to find an angle that's the side of an angle, would you automatically know that it's going to be not the, the big one? Yep, you are correct, sir. You may not have noticed that I did say that earlier this hour. <laughs> it's okay. But you came to it on your own, which is cool. Yeah, I agree. When you find it, you're always going to be finding that one. You will never be finding the big one. It's all right. You can listen to the recording if you don't believe me. <laughs> okay, well, there's that too. Okay. All right. Yes? How about, okay, sine to the negative first happens when we are trying to get sine of some unknown angle. Whenever you want to solve that kind where the B is here, you'll do inverse sine of the other side. All right, so let's just finish this off. We have about uh, 10 minutes left-ish. So I'm going to do law of sines. And I'm going to start with the little a. You know why? Because that's just smart. It's always start with the variable that you want. I want A, so I'm starting with it. Over sine of big A, but, but I don't have that angle. But you really do, because if I take 180 and the other two angles, I can figure out what A has to be. So I'm going to go 180 minus 30 minus 138.2. <coughs> Holy cow. 11.8 degrees, 11.8 degrees. My dad used to do the same thing. He was like a really loud sneezer. All right, so 11.8 degrees up there, so I'm going to go sine of 11.8 equals, and then the other part of this is some other side. Well, I can pick anything I want. I'm going to pick the 12. 12 over the other angle that goes with the 12, sine of 138.2. Now, this is just a number. If you're experienced like me, you'd be like, okay, that's just some decimal. I'm going to go find that decimal. Okay, so I'm going to go 12 divided by sine of 138.2. And I got 18.00. That's pretty convincing, 18. Do you guys get 18 over there too? Okay. So A over sine of 11.8 equals 18. Now I'm going to times by sine of 11.8 on both sides. That cancels that. And I'm going to take my 18 and times it by sine of 11.8. Would yours round to 3.7? Okay, cool. A was 3.7. All right, this was tricky. So, let's see what you should do to practice it.
we're going to fast forward through a bunch of slides here and get to the homework, and I'm going to show you four problems, which if you do them, you'll stay on track and you'll be fine in the next test. A lot of kids last year got A's in this test. Okay, but there's going to be some subset of you that are going to be too lazy. Please. And if you are too lazy to do these, you, you will pay a price. Okay, so you're going to have to spend that extra 15 minutes. You took the honors class. It's going to take a little time. It's only like 15 minutes, maybe 20. You'll have a key you can look at too. All right. So I'm going to do recommend these two problems, the two on the, the very first two. So on this page, let's set this up together. So one kid last hour is like, so I just drew a random angle and I called it six degrees. Do you think that, wait, six degrees. Do you think that's even close to six degrees? No. Then your picture's going to be messed up. It's guaranteed to not look right. So it says six degrees, then you should draw an angle that looks like it's about six. And also, do you remember me saying, let's start with a horizontal line. For all of the setups of these problems, your life will be easier if you start this way. Okay, so we're on number 13, draw a horizontal line. If your hand hasn't moved, I know you're not staying with me. All right, now I'm going to make a six degree angle. I don't know exactly what six is, but I know it's really small. There, that's about six, let's say. Okay. At least don't make it like 30 or 40 or 50 degrees. All right. Now, which one's which? Well, let's make this A. And by the way, it's got an alpha. Alpha is the Greek letter for A. I personally would just change all of the alphas to capital A's. And let's just take a two-second Greek primer. A, B, and C is the ones we've been using for our formulas, right? Alpha, beta is B. And C, I couldn't even remember, but I looked it up on one of the future slides here. It looks a little bit like a V. That is a C from the Greek alphabet. I don't know why they're torturing us with this. Maybe they're just trying to say the letters aren't always going to be A, B, and C. Okay, but if I were you, I'd go through and whenever I saw an alpha, I'd make an A. Whenever I saw a beta, I'd make it B. And whenever I saw this weird little thing... I think it's a gamma. Anybody Greek enough to know that, that is that a gamma? I think it's gamma. And that's a C. All right. So A, let that be here. Then that means this is six. And why did I pick that to be A? Um, I can pick it to be anything I want. And I've got a side and an angle across from it. And so this is 57. So, so this side here must be 57. Now, if it's going to be 57, just by logic, I'm not going to draw this straight down and assume it's going to be a right triangle. That seems like it, it wouldn't be 57. I'm going to draw it this way. Wait, wait, I'm going to actually make it a little longer. This way and that way. And I'm going to say that that's 57. A could be 57 this way, or it could be 57 this way. And the last one's 100. Remember the bottom one is always unknown? So this must be 100. And they tell me it's B. Okay, then they want B here. So what don't we know? Well, a lot of things. We don't know this side length down here. Remember, it's unknown. So it's either this long or it's that long. That red side is 57. We know that. The black side at the top is 100, so we know that. We know that one angle is 60. Boy, wouldn't it be nice if we knew another angle? If you could figure out this angle right here, then you'd know it was the same as this angle right there, which would in turn tell you this angle right here because they together make 180. So that would be your goal is to find angle C. Nope, my bad. B. Because weirdly, B could either be here or it could be here.
Angle C is also something you'd like to figure out, but my best advice, find this angle first with the law of sines. So let's start it. Sine of big B over, what's the side across from big B? It's little b, and it's what? 100 equals sine of 60, or no, 6, sorry. Sine of 6 over 57. Oh my gosh, it's pretty much done. Now, you'll use a calculator on this part, and you might wonder later, like, why are we doing calculators? You'll understand more later. Okay. So, if I set that one up for you, go to problem 14, change this to a capital C, because then you'll know, oh, it goes with the little c. I don't know why they mess with the Greek letters there. And if you get confused on the setup, it's okay to totally look at the key. Go do that UFO problem too. All right, now the ball is in your court. That's all I got for you for today. Then these you can skip because they're basically the same exact thing. They're just making you practice it. If you want to do more, you can. And I would strongly recommend this one. You snooze on it, you lose. There's the answer key. All right.